Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is your Bakugo Katsuki fix. This one shot is a YouTube exclusive. It's not on my site and won't be found anywhere else except for in the pits of my drafts on computer. Uh, it is a little racy. There is a Cabadon scene. <laughs> I'm obsessed with Cabadon. So any chance I get to slip it into my books or one shots, I most definitely do. For those unfamiliar with the Cabadon term, it's that scene in the anime where the boys cage the girls or gender switch girls cage the boys against the wall and do the whole like pinning them there while making eye contact. Like that one, uh, Toto Deku, get it? Midoriya pins him against the wall. Your mate's secret love child or something. <laughs> I don't know why Todoroki jumped out just then, I'm sorry. Okay, anyway, let's get to it. This is your Bakugo Katsuki ex-female listener, Court and Cabidond. You and Bakugo had been talking a lot more recently, texting all day, snapchatting all night. You were getting closer and closer by the minute, it seemed, to the point where it was obvious that you were both flirting, but neither of you would make that next move. Hey, you texted him one weekend, lying on your bed in your dorm room. What? He sent back immediately. You smirked to yourself. He acts so tough, yet his reply was so fast it almost came in before my text was sent out, you thought. Your fingers typed out the message that had been on your mind for a while now, and you listened to the little clicks of your phone keyboard as he punched it out. How come I never see what's in your room? You asked. There was a long pause after you'd sent your text, and you thought that maybe he'd put his phone down and walked off. Finally, his reply came back. Why do you need to know what's in my room, nerd? No, I'm just saying that whenever you send me a picture, you never show what's in the background unless you're lying in bed. So you don't like it when I give you close-up pictures of my abs? You know they're perfection. Don't act like you don't love it, he replied. A very typical Bakugo response. Oh, I like it, trust me. But you've been in my room and seen what's in here, but not once have I been in your room. So I'm just curious, you said. Don't get comfortable extra, I'm not inviting you in here, he replied with an angry emoji. Stay in your damn room and I'll stay in mine. Chill, Baku, I'm just curious. It's just a room, damn. He sent you a middle finger emoji in response and you scowled. Why are we like this? We're so good when it's good, but when we fall out, it's the perfect storm, you thought with a troubled sigh, clicking your home screen off and dropping your phone on the bed. Now let's be real here, if Bakugo had just sent you a picture of his room, everything would have been fine and you would have just dropped the issue altogether, but because he was being so stubborn and secretive about it, you couldn't help but feel like he was hiding something. So being the non-curious person that you were not, you decided to investigate because he was for sure hiding something. Picking your phone back up off the bed, you rang Kaminari. Hey, he greeted in his flirtatious voice. Hey Sparky, he greeted happily. Listen, I have a uh, massive favour to ask. Anything for you, Yin Babe, he replied. You snorted with amusement. Do you think you could get Baku Bro out of his room for a bit? I only need like 10 minutes. Oh, Kaminari hummed. Doing a bit of a sneaky sneaky. Yeah, I got you. Give me a sec. Sweet. Thanks, bro, he said, sitting up and hanging up the phone. Walking to your door, you popped it open and watched down the hall, waiting for Bakugo's door to open. It was only a few seconds later that you saw him storm out of his room and lock his door before heading off down the hall, marching along like the perfectly hunched delinquent that he was. You waited a second, then left your room, running down the hallway to his door and using your quirk to pick his lock and let yourself in. Locking his door quickly behind you, you stood and looked around. His room seemed normal enough, and you were a little bit disappointed at first. There's nothing in here. Why would he be so coy if there's nothing here to hide, you thought, walking further in and looking around. He had a bookshelf, and you glanced at it, and then looked again at the bottom shelf. The book names caught your eye, and you crouched down to take a better look. Hang on a second. I recognise these book titles. You squinted your eyes and leaned in a bit more. Wait, are these romance novels? You reached down and picked one out, flicking it open to see if it was indeed the book that you thought it was. As you stood up with book in hand, intending to sit down on Bakugo's bed, his door suddenly flew open and he stood there with his right hand smacked palm first into the centre of it. His intimidating red eyes scrunched slightly in a scowl as they focused on you, standing next to the bookshelf with book in hand caught red-handed. What are you doing? He snarled, a small crackling sound emitting from the palms of his hands as the anger boiled over. 
Oh, fudge, you gasped internally, remaining frozen as he stepped in and slammed the door shut behind himself. You jumped with fright and dropped the book, the soft thump as it hit the floor, being lost amid the pounding sound of your heartbeat in your ears. I knew something was up, he growled lowly as he stalked closer to you. Uh, I'm sorry, you whispered, I, I was just curious. You backed back away from him, but his room was only so big, and in four steps you'd hit the wall, back pressed against it with nowhere to go. Bakugo saw that he had you cornered, and the minute that you were flush with the wall, he jumped at you, quickly grabbing your wrists and throwing your arms up against the wall over your head, with his face inches from yours. His sudden attack made you flinch and scrunch your eyes shut, but he had your arms up and pinned before you even had a chance to move. So, found my collection, he growled with anger. What are you going to do now, nerd? I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to say anything, you stammered, opening your eyes and focusing into his crimson red ones. They were so close that you could see small, darker flecks of red inside. Spellbound for a moment, you waited for him to say something in reply, but he just held you like that, staring into your eyes. I, I like you, you suddenly blurted out. I wanted to feel like we were closer. I, I don't know. I just... He didn't move. You were hoping that your sudden confession would throw him and that he would step back or change the expression on his face, but he didn't move. Finally, a scowling smirk graced his features and he let out a low chuckle. Ha! <laughs> Looks like I win. Extra. I broke you. you. You what? You asked, confused. Does this position make you feel pressured? He asked, his voice changing from anger to suggestive. He slid your wrists together against the wall and anchored them with his left hand while his right hand was free to drop to your side and pin your hip to the wall as well. Your breathing rate increased the second that his hand touched you and you quickly glanced in the direction of his hand then up to his eyes again. It felt like he had moved closer. His nose was almost touching yours. Well, yeah, you whispered in a husky voice, suddenly unable to speak properly. You'd pass out if I kissed you right now, huh? He uttered in a provocatively low tone. Tr tr try me, you stammered out. He closed the gap, the tip of his nose grazing yours as he tilted his head slightly and pressed his lips to yours. You had always loved his scent, that burnt caramel smell, and you inhaled deeply through your nose as his lips moved with yours. As soon as contact had been made, you both closed your eyes, and after a few seconds he pulled back and your eyelids fluttered open again. I didn't pass out, you said proudly. You're an idiot, he chuckled, still scowling, smirking. He stepped back and let you go, and you dropped your hands to your side again. Wait, you just kissed me. Does that mean you like me back? What do you think, dumbass? He scoffed. Where did you learn a kiss like that? From the romance books, you teased. You literally want to die today, huh? He growled, and you squeaked and turned, jumping onto his bed as he used his quirk to propel himself across and onto the bed as well so that he could tackle you down. Back you go, you screeched when he pinned you face down, then quickly rolled you over and locked your arms by your head. Okay, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I was joking. Don't effing joke about it, he growled. You're looking down on me. You think you're so much better, huh? I'm four times stronger than you are. I, hey, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I like it, okay? I like that you have the books. I'm sorry I teased you, you said quickly, cutting into his sensitive rant. He scowled and gripped your wrist tighter and turned his face away with a... It's not, is now a bad time to ask for a kiss? You asked softly. I like that one that you gave me before. I'm not going to give you anything now because you're being an idiot, he huffed, letting you go and getting off the bed with hands shoved in his pockets. He got up slowly and sadly walked to the door. Sorry, Bakugo, he said sadly, as he placed a hand on the door handle to leave. Don't call me Bakugo, it's Katsuki, he mumbled, scowling and looking away. Your eyes snapped up and looked at him, a grin replacing the look of sadness that had been there a second ago. I'll text you, Katsuki, he said. Mm, he grunted, not looking at you. Come back later tonight. You smirked. Okay, sure. And that's the end. Hopefully you enjoyed that one. Sorry I sound a little bit gunged up. Too much ice cream. I don't have COVID-19, I hope. I haven't gone anywhere. How could I cat up unless I caught it from the ice cream, which is impossible. But anyway, I'll be back soon with another one shot.